Yep. Thank you. Uh, so, hi, my name is Hugo. I run my own uh, little company called Little Robots. Um, I'm also a GDE, a Google Developer Expert for Android. And I am one of the leads of the Dutch Energy User Group in the Netherlands. So, this is how you can reach me. And this little thing here, it's uh, called the Light Blue Bean. It's um, a tiny IoT prototyping module, and it pairs an Arduino uh, with a Bluetooth low energy module. And uh, it has a, a temperature sensor on it, it has an accelerometer on it, and I'm no, not sure if it's visible, but it has a LED, LED also. And so this thing runs code. Uh, there's actually now a program running on this thing, making the lights flash. So that's how I get started with uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, so this is just to get you some context. For this thing, there was no Android SDK, so uh, I set out to build one my, myself based on the iOS SDK that was available. Um, so last year, around July, I uh, released this thing. Uh, it's MIT licensed, so you can do whatever you want with it. It's open source. And there's an example of what you can do with it. So scanning for some beans. And then you can see, show some battery level information, some other stuff. And once you start shaking this thing, then um, it will plot out the accelerometer graphs. So I only got 20 minutes, so there's a lot of, to cover. Uh, so I'll just dive right into uh, what Android and Blue, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy has to offer. So it has been in the platform since KitKat. Uh, in KitKat, they totally rewrote the whole Bluetooth stack. Uh, it's called BlueDroid. And uh, then at KitKat, they also introduced the Bluetooth Low Energy stuff. So it's important to understand that there are basically two flavors of Bluetooth. There's the, the classical Bluetooth, which you use when you connect your phone to a car kit or to a wireless headset. And that's optimized for um, really streaming large amounts of data, relatively large. And there's like the low energy stuff, which is obviously for low energy applications. So this bean, for example, depending on what you do with it, it can run up uh, on a sing single coin cell battery. Uh, it runs a couple of weeks, a couple of months, depending on the programs you run on it. So this Bluetooth low energy uh, use cases are usually for uh, devices that uh, require a little or uh, little uh, data overhead for heart rate monitors, wearables, um, that kind of stuff. So to, to get started on Android, first, you have to declare some permissions, of course. Well, maybe not when, <laughs> when M is introduced, but for now, you still do. Um, you need two permissions. You actually need the Bluetooth permission, and you need the Bluetooth admin permission. The Bluetooth permission is to make a connection to a device. Admin is for scanning. Um, in practice, you need both. Um, if you have an app that really requires Bluetooth, then you should also specify that in the manifest so that it doesn't install on devices that don't support Bluetooth Low Energy. Usually, though, uh, if you have an app that, for example, works with beacons but doesn't really require a beacon, then you can also do this check at runtime by just using the package manager for that. So the first step would be scanning and finding a, a Bluetooth Low Energy device. So these devices are basically broadcasting their presence all the time, typically around uh, once a second. Um, this is quite different from, uh, from classical Bluetooth already, because in Bluetooth you have to put your device in visible mode and then you can only connect to it. So not, not in this case, it's just broadcasting all the time. Um, so first you have to get a, a Bluetooth uh, adapter to actually start scanning. So how do you do that? You get them from the system service that is introduced in KitKat as well. And there's also uh, uh, an older API that still works, but the, the first one is preferred. Then you, of course, have to check if Bluetooth is enabled. And uh, there's a method for that on the adapter. If it isn't, then you can fire off an intent to ask the user to enable it. There's also an API to enable it, but that's just very rude. You should never use that, basically. I'm not, I'm not sure why it is in the API, but don't do that. Then we're off to finding a device. So this thing is broadcasting all of the time. And here you can already see there's a, a different API for scanning. If you're familiar with Bluetooth, there's a different API for uh, low energy. So it's called start LE scan. It takes a, a, a LE scan callback. And in that callback, you will get uh, the device, 
the signal strength and the raw advertising packet that, uh, that the device is broadcasting, so the raw bytes on protocol level. And as you might notice, this thing returns a Boolean. So the first question is, what the hmm does false mean? I want to scan and it returns false. So most likely, uh, Bluetooth is turned off. But you usually check for that. So, uh, so then what's the other option? The other option is, unfortunately, especially on KitKat, Jelly Bean, uh, there are some infamous bugs where uh, after a certain amount of scan, the whole Bluetooth stack would just stop scanning. Um, you could work around that by toggling Wi-Fi or toggling Bluetooth even, or maybe do a, a, a classical Bluetooth scan. But it's quite annoying that it just stops working. You have some fake errors in the lock. Uh, yeah, so that's one of the bumps that I ran into when building this SDK. And the other question is, how many callbacks will you get for each device that you find? So uh, you might have guessed it. It depends. Uh, it depends on the type of device that you're using it on. Uh, on some devices, you will get uh, one callback for, a for any Bluetooth device uh, at, at any time. Uh, and other devices, you will get uh, each time the, the, the device is broadcast, and you'll get a callback. And that's quite annoying, especially if you're working with beacons. Then you really want to know, we want to catch every broadcast, because you might be moving along the beacon. And you want to know if you are closing by, or if you're, uh, yeah, like if it's, yeah, if you're near or close to the beacon. If you're dealing with a heart rate monitor, it's probably OK to just catch one broadcast of that thing, because chances are pretty slim that the heart rate monitor is going anywhere. Um, but yeah, it's quite annoying that it's not consistent. And then there's this other uh, thing. Uh, usually, you don't want to find any Bluetooth device. You want to find a particular device uh, of what your app is supporting. For example, if you're dealing with a heart rate monitor, you want to scan for heart rate monitors. It doesn't make any sense to connect to these kinds of things. So. There are, is a, a variant for the start release scan that takes a service UEID. And um, so every Bluetooth device has services. And these services are in the, identified by a unique ID. And these unique ID come basically in two flavors. So you have the Bluetooth assigned ones. So uh, the Bluetooth committee has uh, decided that this is the specified UEID for a heart rate monitor. And you have UEIDs that a vendor can make up. And that's totally fine. A vendor can just invent its own UEID. Now, this method does not work with vendor-specified UEIDs. So when I was trying the, uh, the SDK for the Bean, it didn't find this device, even if I passed in the UEID. And there are some, some nasty workarounds that you can do. It basically boils down that you have to parse the byte arrays uh, coming from the advertisement uh, as well. So that's quite annoying as well. So now for some good news. All of this stuff is deprecated in Lollipop. Depending on how you look at it, it's good news. Uh, in Lollipop, they introduced a more capable Bluetooth scanner. And that supports filtering of devices. It supports batching uh, of results. It also su supports low power modes. So it's more feasible to be scanning all the time in the background. It wasn't in, on KitKat or, or Jellybean, because that still uh, uses a lot of power on your, uh, on your cell phone. And uh, well, it's actually pretty easy. You, again. You set the UEID. This, in this case, it's the UEID for the serial service of the thing. Um, you get the adapter. You build a scan filter, and scan filter can take like a service UEID, but can also take other options. It's very really powerful, uh, and you get some scan, uh, scan settings. Then you get the Bluetooth LE scanner, and you call start scan on it, and it takes. Like I said, it takes the scan filters, takes the scanning, uh, settings, and a scan callback. And what's already nice here that there's no longer booleans. It's just a, a callback when something bad happened with a proper error code. Um, so that's nice. What's also nice is that you don't no longer have to deal with uh, byte arrays parsing yourself. Uh, you now get a properly parsed scan result object. So that's a, a, already an improvement. Um, yeah, there's one more thing, though. Not all of these features are supported on every device. There are, uh, the, the filtering and the low power modes require hardware support. And there are two Boolean methods to tell you if it's supported. For example, Nexus 5 does not support uh, low power modes. Um, and if you try to use them on a device that does not support it, you will immediately get uh, an error callback. So yeah, that's scanning. 
if you're not dealing with uh, a beacon or something that you don't want to connect to, then you probably are going for this step, connecting to, uh, actually connecting to the device. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, there's a connect get method on the Bluetooth device. It takes a context because, hey, everything in Android takes a context. Um, there's an auto connect flag and there's a, a Bluetooth get callback. And the callback is basically, um, yeah, your callback for all everything related to the device once it's connected. It returns a Bluetooth get uh, object and it's really important to manage that object because that represents the connection to your device. If you lose a reference to that, to that object, then um, in, some, in most cases it will stay connected for a while. And if the device is connected, you cannot scan for it and you cannot, cannot uh, connect to it again. You can, there's no way to disconnect it as well. So that's quite uh, inconvenient. So you should really manage that like crazy, um, especially if you're dealing with activities, of course. If you rotate your activity, activity goes away, reference might be gone, uh, nasty things happen. So don't forget to close uh, this object um, when, you're, uh, when you're done with the device. Or maybe stuff it in some kind of singleton of service or whatever. Then there's this question of the auto connect flag. Uh, that's a really, uh, really an odd thing. I, basically, I recommend against using it. Uh, it's not really clear what it should do, how it should work, how many, how, f how fast it will reconnect, will it reconnect, will it try once, uh, whatever. The behavior is totally unclear, and most apps should really uh, not rely on this and manage the connection on your own. And that's typically what most Bluetooth apps do. So, the Bluetooth get callback. Um, that has a typical sequence. You usually will go to on connection change, change, which will tell you if you're actually connected. Um, well, once you're connected, you can't really do anything with the device yet. You first have to discover the services to find out with what device you are dealing with. That will yield in a callback on services discovered. And there you can figure out what kind of device it is, what kind of properties it has, and then you're ready to go and uh, read, write these properties, or subscribe to it. And uh, of course, when you're done with all of this, you close the connection again. So this is how uh, that would look. You just call connect get. Uh, then you get the on connection state change. Well, you check if the state is successful. And I really recommend to check for success because I've always seen uh, there's also some options that you get um, uh, statuses here that are not defined in the API anywhere. So just assume if it's success, we're fine. If it's something else, it's a failure. Um, so you check if you're connected. And then you try to discover the services. Unfortunately, that also returns a Boolean. So if it returns a Boolean, you basically have no clue why it failed. So just close the connection. Um, if it did work, then at some point we will get on services discovered. And there you just retrieve the service based on the unique UEID again. So if you would be dealing with a heart rate monitor, then you know what its UEID is, and you will get that from uh, the service. If it's not supported, then it would turn null here. And well, in that case, probably something bad happened. You're connected to a device which has not the service that you are expecting, so you close the connection again. Uh, what's not in the documentation that there's a, a, a maximum amount of connections that your device can have to uh, a Bluetooth devices in general at any time. And on KitKat, and, uh, on KitKat it's four connections in total. And on Jellybean and up, it's uh, seven. So if you have connected a wearable to your device, then you're already one connection down. And this is only be found in the source code of Bluetooth. So go figure. Um, so, characteristics. Characteristics are the properties that you want to read from the device. So in the case of a heart rate monitor, it would be the actual, actual heart rate reading. In case of this device, it's more communicating with the protocol. Um, so, how do you read these characteristics? Um, in the on services discovered, you get a reference to the, to the characteristic based on its unit ID, which you will get from the services. So on this slide, I'm not it's not shown how you get the service, but yeah, it's a slide, so it's not real code. Um, then you try to read the characteristic, and again, that might fail. So if it fails, then you close the connection. Um, if it did work, then you get an on-characteristic read callback. 
Um, and again, it returns the status, so you should check if it's successful. If it's successful, yay, we got some data. You just get it from the characteristic. Uh, and there are some options there. You can get it as a byte array or as a string or other variants. And one thing that also might happen is that you get the get insufficient authentication status, which basically means that you need to pair the device. And compared to classical Bluetooth, that's pretty late in the game. Uh, usually on classical Bluetooth, you even can't even connect if it's not paired. But here you can just connect and discover services and do whatever with what you want with the device until you read something. It then will say, well, you need to pair. Um, on KitKat, there's no API for pairing the device programmatically, but there is on uh, starting on Jellybeam. And in any case, you probably want to close the connection, do the pairing dance, and then connect again. So what makes Bluetooth low energy actually low energy is that the device can tell you when, um, when something changed. So that's called notifications. And uh, this is how you set them up. You, in the, on service discovered, you still get the service and the characteristic. And then um, you will uh, call the get set characteristic notification with the characteristic and a Boolean. And you would sort of expect that this would be done. Then everything is fine. But that's not the case. Um, there's also a thing called a descriptor. Uh, on Bluetooth. So a characteristic has descriptors, which are metadata that you can read and write on the characteristic. Um, for example, it gives you some information on what this characteristic is about, and it also can uh, specify if this uh, characteristic is uh, able to notify you when it changed. So here's the UEID for the notification um, uh, descriptor, and it's a set UEID specified by the Bluetooth uh, committee. So if you find this UEID, then you, can, then you know it's, it's able to notify you. So then you need to write to this descriptor. You'll set enable notification value. It's just a constant. Uh, you try to write it again. Might fail again. So if it fails, then close it. Um, and uh, if it worked and the status is success, profit. We now get notifications. Awesome. So every time now that characteristic changes, you get a callback. You just get the value from that, uh, from that uh, callback. Oh, skipping slide. So there are, again, some undocumented limits here, um, only to be found in the source code. There's a maximum amount of notifications that you can have per connection. Um, it's four on KitKat, it's seven on Jellybean, and 15, or, uh, 15 on uh, Lollipop and Up, which is quite annoying. Uh, I mean, this thing already has seven or eight interesting uh, properties, characteristics that you want to be notified of. So four is definitely too, uh, not, not enough. Uh, seven is meh, better, and 15 is probably all right for most, uh, most uh, cases. Um, and then again, you won't find these limits until you find some vague error in the locket, and then you start digging in the source code of Android. So this really should be documented. Okay. We did some reading, we did some subscription. Writing is uh, equally, it's not that hard. Um, you just set the value on the, on the characteristic, which you have a reference for, and then you call write characteristic with, again, can return false. If it returns false, no clue why, just close. Um, it's very important that you wait for the uncharacteristic write callback, because if you start writing here in a loop, for example, then you will just drop packets and you will not send anything to the device. That means that in the SDK, I'm really juggling writes in that sense, because by definition, this thing, I send, I'm sending commands to that thing. Um, and a command can be larger than 20 bytes, and 20 bytes is like the maximum uh, size that you can put in a characteristic. So that means assembling packets, making sure that everything is written correctly, then writing, writing the next is kind of a hassle. And this thing makes it even harder because it uses a single characteristic for both reading and writing. Okay. So that leads up to some conclusions. Uh, well, Android has full support of Bluetooth Low Energy starting in KitKat. Uh, it has been maturing, especially in Lollipop. Um, the Bluetooth Low Energy related APIs, they are really low level. It's like they just wrapped the C code and gave you a Java interface. Um, there's error checking all over the place, and it's really hard to get right. I'm pretty sure I didn't go, got it correctly right in the, in the Bean SDK. 
and the documentation could use some work. It's unclear how some behaviors work. There's just the limits are missing. So, some other observations. Um, there's a lot of complexity in managing multiple characteristics in a single callback. So if you have a non-trivial device, then you, you end up with a huge callback uh, that needs to handle all the cases. Um, and what I said, the, the low-level interface, it seems pretty straightforward, but it's difficult to get it totally right. If you want to learn more about this stuff, well, you can, of course, take a look at the SDK, even if you're not dealing with the Bean. Uh, just for some, uh, some Bluetooth code. Uh, There's a good starter on developer.android.com. And if you want to learn more about the Bean, then just visit their site. And that's all I have. Um, thank you. <laughs>